Hello， 大家好，欢迎回到这个乐学成长空间。那么今天又来到了这个老板面对面的这个系列。那么如果这是你第一次观看这个老板面对面的系列，顾名思义，也就是啊、呃，在这个系列当中，我会不定时的邀请马来西亚上市公司的一些老板啊、创始人啊，或者是管理层来跟我们分享，到底他们的公司有什么是值得我们关注的事项。那么今天我邀请的公司，也是我曾经做过视频的一家公司 ，BTM Resources Bah。而上次在我的这个影片里面，我指出了嘛 b t n Resources b o h a 目前是在经历这一个转型，要转型成为一个再生能源发电厂，而更准确来说，也就是这个生物质发电厂 Biomass Power Plant。所以我个人就很好奇，到底这个 Biomass Power Plant 的这个进展到底是如何？所以今天我们就邀请到了这个啊 b t n Resources b o h a 的这个执行董事。也是他们这个在这个转型成再生能源发电厂的主要发言人达多乌。当然，今天这个访谈将会以英文的方式进行，将会有双语字幕。So without further ado, let's invite the guest of the day, Dato Wu. Oh, Dato Wu. Yeah, really appreciate you taking your time to have this interview with me. Ah,、uh, why not you take this opportunity to say hi to the audience? Yes. Hi, everyone. Great to hear from all of you. All right. Thank you, Lejay. Okay. I'm nice. So. Um, for the for the audience, if this is the first time you encounter about BTM Resources Bahad, just let me allow me to use a quick one minute to kind of run through what are their business about and where are they heading towards to. BTM Resources Bahad 股票代码为 BTM 七一八八，也就是今天要带大家了解的公司。这家公司自成立以来都是从事于木桶相关业务。而他们的生意模式可以分为两个部分：上游和下游。上游也就是涉及与伐木和锯木的相关业务；至于下游，也就是指生产木桶的相关产品，如咬干木材、磨压木材、纸粘木材和层压板。除此之外，他们也是有生产生物质木屑颗粒，也就是这种所谓的 biomass wood pellet。那么，刚刚我们说的是公司的旧面貌。但是接下来我们要直奔主题，来谈谈公司即将发展的生物质发电厂。BTM 旗下的公司 BTM Biomass Products and Design b a h a t BTMBP， 成功的从马来西亚再生能源机构 s e d a 获得批准建造一个生物质发电工厂。So hopefully with that quite uh quick one minutes uh overview, we have a better understanding on what BTM Resources b a h a t is heading to it. So let's jump right into the question. So that's all. My first question will be: I mean, since from the initial approval BTM has obtained from Seda, BTM Resources shall begin to product、uh, produce electricity by the January of 2023. However, when we're looking on the calendar right now, is is already in August, so it means that there's only around five months left to construct the biomass renewable energy power plant. So my question will be: What are the company contingency plans, or what are the latest development? You wish to update all the investor on the unintended delay? Okay,、uh, the unintended delay was purely due to the condition precedent with regards to our loan, which is tied up with our corporate exercise over the equity of the twenty percent of the one hundred fifteen point six billion EPCC contract awarded to Sam Aden. All right, we have got the approval from Busa. All right,、uh, to hold our EGM for our right, right. issue to be held. Which is on the twenty third of August. Now, this little delay in here have caused a delay in our fit out or commissioning, which is scheduled to be on the twenty third of、uh, January, twenty twenty three. However, we have already got an extension of time, okay, until the twenty third of July, in which we have been advised by Seda, okay, that maybe we should get it extended to the month of December. All right. Now we are still considering on that because based on the approvals that we have obtained, I mean, which was announced to the Busa and also to the public, on all our development order approvals with regards to the building plans, subdivision, the works, and also the infrastructure, are about a month ago. Okay, you can check through the Busa website,、okay. and we would we have started and we are going ahead with it, and we are scheduled that we will be able to complete it by the end of December. As per the power technology package, contractor has been awarded on the job basis. All right, but we are not、uh, so called during the extension time now until we have complete the EGM、uh, on the twenty third of August. All right, 
Based right. on this, I think it will be on schedule by the 2023rd. The power plant will be completed and should be able to fit out. And the income should generate in by the year 2024. Got it. So it sounds like with the unintended delay is mostly because of the capital issue and you do get the approval from SEDA to actually uh, delay uh, the commencement date and um, the, the day to kind of product, uh, produce electricity. That's good to know. So just follow up question, because it seems like we touched on the capital issue that we mentioned earlier. So I just want to understand that is there, I understand there's like a few changes took place on the right issue proposal. I'm like, is currently the revised proposal offering a much more better or like kind of more attractive deal to the existing shareholders right now? Oh, of course. I think the <laughs> current deal that was approved now is definitely a much better deal as compared to the previous submission. Now, the original submission we have in mind and uh, submitted the proposal to BUSA was for two for nine rights, in which I think we'll pack along with the warrant C. All right. Okay. And um, the share price will be based on the five weighted uh, days average. All right. Yep. But uh, the anticipated pricing at that particular time was 10 cents. All right. Yep. But in view of the BUSA's requirement and may, uh, request, all right. We have now uh, fixed the numbers, all right? Okay. Instead of the five uh, weighted days average, we have fixed the numbers. The rights will be at eight cents and the number of shares will be one share, one mother share for six rights and warranty two numbers. So objectively, objectively, mm -hmm. assuming the last five weighted days average is about 12 cents, all right? Yep. Now you have got 12 cents Okay, for one mother share. But you are given six at eight cents. All right. Six mm -hmm. at eight cents objectively is about 48 cents total for seven share. But we have got two numbers of warranty in which the valuation by MA and the external independent party is about seven cents per warranty, and they're given for free. Yep. You're given two warranty, which is work out to be about 14 cents. All right. So based on 48 cents plus the 12 cents from the mother share is 60 cents. You minus off the 14 cents, it comes approximately about 46 cents, but you are given, okay, seven number of shares there. Mm -hmm. So if you divide it equally, it will go down to as low as an approximate about seven cents per share. Okay. Right. Okay. So if the current trading price is about 12, okay, you have a good uh, discounted value on it. All right. Now, yep. besides that particular point, we are in on ESG compliance on our power plant, which is under green energy. Okay. I've not seen a counter, okay, um, that will be trading at this pricing, okay, accordingly. And besides that particular point, our yield is a double-digit yield. And our income, okay, for the year is touching at about 28 million a year. Okay. 10 megawatt. So, therefore, I think it's a good buy. Okay, then when I was looking into some announcement, uh, BTM latest announcement, I do saw that uh, beside that you guys obtained the 10 megawatt power plant approved from SEDA back in July 2020, lately your company obtained another 7 megawatt power plant approval from SEDA back in June. Can you please share with us what are the, like, the similarities or differences between these two power plants? Okay, the two power plants share the same concept that is supplying to TMB via SEDA with a guaranteed payment from the government. All right. The only major difference will be the rates, the tariff rates. The okay. tariff rates given for our 10 megawatt is actually 34.86 cents, mm -hmm. while the 7 megawatt is 33.83 cents. There's a difference of approximately one cent. Yep. Now, this is all due to uh, the fact that is in the first standard is based on the basis of first come first serve basis, while the second power plant was due to bidding. Now we bid it slightly lower than what was what we uh, obtained on the first one was due to the main reason is they share the same land. All the infrastructure has been done under the first power plant, so our capital cost is actually very low compared to the first power plant. And besides the point, the injection point is still the same location or the same PMU, all right? 
it will literally mean our connection to the grid in which when we do for the 10 megawatt we have already done the post we are only giving away okay for the 7 megawatt to be fitted in accordingly so therefore the infrastructure cost will be reduced tremendously and we are anticipating based on the 7 megawatt we are probably getting a little bit more yield compared to the 10 megawatt considering the fact of the capex okay has been actually expanded under the 10 megawatt that is, I'm like, it, that's interesting. I'm like, since like, it, it's very good that you, you, you did mention that you guys, um, like this two power plant is using the same land. And then that's why you kind of reduce CapEx from your second plan. But then it comes to a question. I'm like, cause for your first plan, you guys are doing a, a right issue to kind of raise fund. So it comes to the question of money. So yes. while you are raising fund for your first plan, how are you planning to kind of raise fund for your current, uh, the second plan for the seven megawatt uh, biomass plan? Okay, um, very, very good question. Okay, we have successfully done the first power plant of the 10 megawatt for the loan with MBSP Bank. Yep. It only shows that basically uh, the government, the bankers are very pro into green energy. All right. Now, with our raising of the equity on our first power plant, it shows that we are already in a line with the policy and also the guidelines given by the government that gives us the particular loan based on our current status. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, with the second megawatt, uh, second seven megawatt, yep. with the 10 megawatt intact, and the completion of the second power plant mm -hmm. will be on the year 2025. It will literally mean that it will make my my project more viable and more feasible and easier to obtain the loan from the local uh, bank based on track record. But however, however, our focus is not only obtaining the bank loan, okay, mm -hmm. in which we are now uh, in preparation to discuss with the bank already with the EPCC contractor. We are also sourcing for the second part of it that is external funding, okay, mm -hmm. with uh, some well-known uh, APC contractor who are able to go on the basis build, maintain, and then transfer. All right. Now the third way of actually moving to it, in which we are looking into it now, is packaging the ten megawatt and the second meg uh, seven megawatt into green bonds. Okay, green bonds. Yep. So in green bonds, we are probably able to raise some bond money, okay, in relation to the uh, uh, construction of the 7 megawatt. So in short, we are moving into three areas. Mm -hmm. One is the conventional bank financing. Two is tying in with a strong EPCC contractor to come on the basis of build, maintain, and transfer. Third one will be under bonds, green mm -hmm. bonds. Okay, to support the two power plants together. All right. Gotcha. So it sounds like I mean that's three possible way, and it means that you guys are not just bidding for the fund, and then it seems like that's a feasible way for you guys to actually obtain fund for this plan. But then it comes to another like question that I'm curious, or I, I believe most investors are curious. Right now, BTM Resources, uh, Berhad is a loss making company. So would you be able to share to uh, share on your guesstimate that? with the the first power plan to be um starting to generate electricity in 2024 what is going to be the annual revenue and the uh, internal rate of return if uh based on your guesstimate okay great now um from day one for many years btm yep. has always been in the rate yep. reason being is straightforward is a timber business when it's a timber business um no bank wants to loan we are short of working capital. And with the short of working capital, without enough working capital, we are unable to generate okay, enough rent revenue. And we, we have resulted in a loss. But I'm assuring all the shareholders in here, if there is any in here, all right? VTM is not in trouble. We are not in a cash flow uh, situation whereby we are, are really in trouble. We have got the problem of the call that uh, EBITDA, that is earnings before tax, all right? A lot of them, when we bought the machinery store stays, are on cash basis, really. So the depreciation have resulted in a loss in our accounts, all right? Now, it's quite difficult to make it into black, 
Yep. Okay, without a proper working capital. Now, there was already a delay, okay, in relation to our approval with PUSA, but we finally got it approved, subject to the EGM to be held on the 23rd. We, on 23rd, there will be a change of the core business. The core business is not more into the timber, not only in timber, it's also into biomass renewable energy. All right? With this, we are ESG compliance. It's easier for us to raise working capital, okay, to go into our existing business that is onto the pallets, which is also under green energy, yep. all right? And we are able to generate more income. And by virtue of this, in the event, if this EGM is fully completed by the 23rd of August, and with the money from the right issues coming in by the month of early October, we should be able to go full swing and we should be able to see some uh, big changes into our revenue, especially in regards to the pallets, mm -hmm. all right? And the, we are able to see some black figures in the year 2024, early 2024. All right? Good to know that. Yep. Yeah. So basically, I think uh, on that basis and the internal growth, all right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to make a commitment on the figure, but I can assure you, it will be a double digit. It's not a single digit. All right? And this is very obvious, actually, based on our submission to Busan as well. It will be a double digit. So it, can, it seems like we come to a uh, close to our end of this interview session. So Datu, would you be? Do you have any last word you want to share with the uh, audience regarding anything you feel that is very important for them to take note on BTM resources per heart? Okay, BTM is a company has been doing loss making for many years. Now there is a change. It's a very big change, and we are moving towards into something that in the market, okay, that everybody is wanting for. That is a business that I do not have to carry my bag with a catalog to sell my product and collect money accordingly. Mm -hmm. It is a triple A ratings undertaking from TMB to buy whatever I need to do and whatever I produce accordingly. All right. BTM is seeing the lights at the end of the tunnel in a very clear picture. Now, for an ESG compliance company involving into public utilities, issuance price of eight cents. Well, our company can say that there is a lot of room to grow. All right, give BTM a chance. Come, share with us, and let us make profit and deliver our dividend accordingly all right okay thanks that really appreciate I, I once again i really appreciate you taking uh this time uh to be here with us hopefully um hopefully i'm looking forward for the uh, biomass plan to uh be successful and until next time i will see you bye-bye thank you Leje. thank you very much <laughs>